Now, just recently I received this rather large box which the FedEx guy was not too pleased to carry up two flights of stairs, and it was quite a beast ton box. I could imagine it must have been tough for the FedEx guy. 34 kg, packed in a massive flight case, this kind of packaging needs a hernia warning. And there was a little bit of a pain in the rectal cavity to unbox because, number one, there's not much space to do in here. Everything's strewn all over the place. We're trying to box everything up to get a house move going. And number two, it's 34 freaking kg. Foot. But that's enough complaining about the weight. I've got it out already. It's over here. It doesn't rattle. That's a child's toy. Boom! The Roto Light Titan X1. Titan by name, Titan by weight. And yes, that was another complaint about the weight. But I've used Roto Light lights before. I've got this one. This thing, handy light, takes AA batteries. I think it was actually Locke that introduced me to this light way back in one of the Photokinas. This is called the Neo. But anyway, what we're talking about is the Titan X1, and I'm talking about it because they sent me this for free, and I just realised how much this thing costs. But yes, Road to Light, thank you very much for this, especially given that I just use cheap Chinese lights. This it's gonna be a huge improvement. I can't remember what light I use. I think it's called like a, a Nan Wang. Wang Wang. Fan Wang? Fan Wang. <laughs> That's what my PE teacher used to call me. He used to think I was another Chinese kid. The only other Chinese boy in the whole entire school. He mistook me for the other kid. Oh, I've become a bit of a racist, just like my old PE teacher. I blame it on Brexit. But anyway, there is nothing cheap about this. Well, oh, I already told you the price. But also, Christ, right on the arse of it here. Made at Pinewood Studios. Focus up, focus on me. Oh great, somebody's deciding that it's a perfect time to cut down a freaking tree. Oh, he heard me. Anyway, I just remembered, when you hook up an A7 III to an external monitor, you lose face AF. That is why some of the recent videos, you've seen my face out of focus and it's my hands or product in focus. So I've just disconnected the monitor. But anyway, what was I saying? It's made at Pinewood Studios, England. And it's quite impressive, I tell you. Let's plug it in though. All right, on button. Oh. Obviously such a massive thing like this is going to pump out some heat, so it has got two fans. Let me show you the back of it. These are all touch buttons. Settings. Thermal management. So it's on auto a minute, but this, you can switch the fan on maximum. That's on maximum. That's not going to be the cleanest sounding audio, is it? So switch it to stealth mode. Let's put the brightness down so I don't get blinded by it. On full whack, it felt like my retinas were burning. If you want to keep some detail in a much brighter background, but having the subject bright enough, you kind of need a light that can potentially make your face melt. Forgive the placement of the light, it's almost on the floor near the side of my face. The point is, powerful equals good. So it's got, obviously it's light, you can see. It lights things up, but it also has some special effects. There we are. Oh, that's lightning. I, was, I thought it was a rave party. A bit of uh, electric shock. Uh, strobe. Oh, yes, that's the party time. You know, big fish, small fish, every size of fish, cardboard box. Fire. That will replicate like a fireplace or, or a burning fire. Yeah, the thing you'd have to do is to change the color of the light. And you can do that by go home, go home, and you change the color of the light. So you can change the white balance of it, you can change the hue. So with the touchscreen you can control it quite precisely, like that. To set the mood, there's a nice mood light. They've got preset filters as well. So you can just choose one of them. So that would make a good fire, probably. Just not a good fire for toasting anything on, obvs. I'm going back to just the plain basic light feature. It's got a built-in diffuser. It's just like those privacy glasses you get in fancy offices and police stations, probably. So you can see it changing. That's magic. It's not magic, of course. 
it doesn't exist. Magic is just all about being creepy and having pickpocketing skills, isn't it? This is real. It's not magic. It's right there. As fun as it is playing with all those effects, the electronic dye fusion is one of the coolest things about it. I don't think I've ever seen it used on a lighting unit before, and I think it should be used a lot more because it's fantastic. So it's back to the special effects. Woo! Oh! Woo woo! Police! What else have we got? Oh, we've got gunshots. So you can you can get shot. You press the middle button, I think. Boom! <laughs> and then, after you get shot, you call the police. Uh, TV... Uh, spark weld. I mean, that's for a very specific purpose. For filming welding. Paparazzi! And then that's it. Then we've got a flash feature. We've got high speed sync. We've got high speed flash sync. High speed sync flash. High speed flash sync. So with the high speed flash, let's test that out. So this is 50 of a second. 2,500 of a second. You know what? I'm gonna try this with the Sony A9. No, not the A9, the A1. Same thing. Crazy burst and flash, high speed sync flash. The Neo could function as a flash too, but this is just bigger, more powerful. There's zero recycle times and eight thousandths of a second high speed sync, hence why I thought it would be cool to use it with the insane burst of the Alpha 1 and shooting water splash photography. But yes, it's a light at the end of the day, a light that does a bit more quite a bit more. It's a versatile light, but it's also a very cool bit of tech, which I don't really find myself thinking about with other kinds of lights.